Day one, you're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but like, tell me about this uh, Vipassana, man. Yeah, like, yeah. that's that's one of the things that at first when I heard about it, I was like, uh, being quiet for 10 days, not mm -hmm. looking in anyone's eyes for 10 days, not being really just like myself for 10 days. That, that just sounds like stupid. Mm -hmm. But then like more and more people that I respect, like one of them being you going there and then Dave saying the exact same thing. And every, anything that Dave says is always like good to go. You know High what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. What, what, what happened? Can you like describe it? Like, cause I still don't really know. You're all I know is you're just quiet for 10 days and you eat vegan food, but like what, what's the gist of it? So it's like 10 days of concentrated practice. They call it like a, a concentrated practice time or a long form practice. And it's like 10 days of silence. It's actually 11 days. On the 10th day, you got one more sleep there. And you're like, get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was 10 days, Goinka. But yeah. It's not. It's Goinka. So like, Damn it, Goinka. He's, de he's dead. But, he's oh. dead. but, but he lied. Uh, no, it's, it's 11. Um, and it's 10 days of silence. Well, on um, nine days, the 10th day, you're allowed to speak. They have like a buffer zone where you're allowed to talk again. Because if you just went from complete silence mm. to like all your Facebook men, Instagram messages, you just die. Mm. It's like, you need a buffer zone of like communication again before you like go to the outside world. Mm. But you're getting up at 4.30, you're meditating for two hours, you're having a breakfast, all of them are vegetarian, it's not vegan, uh, vegetarian, and then you uh, have a little bit of a break and then you meditate again for two, two more hours, two, three more hours, and then you got um, lunch at 11, and then mm. you don't eat again for the rest of the day. So it's, in, it's intermittent fasting. 18 hours intermittent fasting and consistently uh, you, like you, everybody loses weight. You lose a bit of weight while you're going there, especially mm. if you're in like a bulking zone, you're going to like cut. Mm. <laughs> it's like a bro version of uh, explaining the Vipassana. Dude, but you look like really cut and shredded right now. I think you even look better now than before. Really? Yeah. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> I was self-conscious about it because I was like trying to get bigger and then every guy, it's like, you look skinny. You're like, <laughs> it's like telling a girl like, you gained weight. Like, I hate that. You, know, you tell a worst. guy like, you look skinny. You're like, yeah. Well, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst when someone comes to you and be like, bro, are you cutting? You're like, no, I'm nope. fucking bulking. Try to bulk, asshole. Or it's like the opposite. It's like when you're bulking, like, or when you're cutting, like, dude, you bulking? I'm like, no. No, exactly. It's, it's like a calling, asking a girl's a pre pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you you get a bit of weight. And you're just like, you just destroyed someone. <laughs> you know? just like just it's, destroyed all, it's a horrible thing to say. Yeah. No, no, it's not. It's not cool. Um, But... I, I literally think you look like good. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Um, I went in and uh, I was super stressed out and burnt out. And what I love about the Vipassana uh, meditation like retreats is it's uh, a reset. The amount of people you talk to every day, like just it, being an entrepreneur, being in social media, being um, in any form of business, like we talk to a lot of people. Mm. And imagine we talk, but there's like, there's a thread there. And then we talk, there's a thread there. And we talk, there's a thread there. And then you have all these different kind of hanging conversations, kind of like tabs open up on your uh, browser. Mm. So you have all these tabs open. And if you go to Vipassana, you're shutting down all the tabs. And then when you get back out, you can open them up again in a clean form. So it's just like reset. Mm. And that is a luxury. Like just to not have to be anyone for anybody for 10 days and you just get back to yourself. And mm. it's terrifying and relaxing at the same time because mm. like the first few days you're just like oh all i have to do is just meditate this time's for you you can just chill but you also have to do the work you have to meditate and a lot of meditation like 10 hours a day of meditation mm. so like that's that's not easy just sitting there you yeah, just get to sit there but no you gotta sit there and and properly meditate so it's it's not easy it's hard but um the results are huge mm. and um you feel really good when you get out you got clarity and that, that's like a powerful thing. So many ideas come through. Mm. So I journal. You're not supposed to journal, but I break all the fucking rules because I'm a badass. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but Did I, you smuggle it in? Oh, yeah. Like up the anal cavity? Yeah, it was hard rolling it up. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a hardcover journal? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah it was, it was tough. It was, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't sit properly for a few days. I was like, ah. <laughs> it's tough. It's a tough one. Um, no, luckily, uh, they don't search your bags. <laughs> okay. That's way better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I journaled and I got some good ideas and I was able to, to do some writing and that was powerful because most of the things I've thought of in Vipassana tech, uh, meditation retreats have been good ideas that turned into something like mm. conscious arts. I had the idea from a meditation retreat. Karma House had the idea for a meditation retreat. A bunch of other little side things, meditation retreats. Like it's, it's cool because mm. you're just like good. All the other bullshit that you got going on in your mm. life gets to quiet down. What was leading up to that? You said you were burning <sighs> out. Yeah. Like crazy. I was, just, I was just driving too much and working too much and not taking enough time for myself. You know, mm. like 
if you don't have enough time for yourself to like realign and connect to yourself, you're burning, you're burning yourself out. You know, you're, it's just too much going on. So I mm. needed to just relax a little bit. I was being a bit unsustain, uh, unsustainable, too much coffee, too much caffeine, too much mm. working time and not enough just chill time. Mm. So that's what I was looking for going into it. Um, I made a mistake of having expectations in this one though. Cause yeah. all, all my other ones, I was like, yo, this is powerful. And uh, this one, I'm going to have huge epiphanies and it's going to change my life, which was like the the bad idea going into it. Mm. And so when I went into this one, um, the center was pretty ghetto. What? Yo. In Nepal, right? Yeah, yeah. It looked like a Taliban training camp. <gasps> <laughs> if, you looked at, if you look at the place, you're like, yeah, they could train terrorists here. <laughs> it's just like a horrible fucking place. That's actually the front. The Vipassana is just a front. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. doing in the back. Yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was a rough center. Like, it mm. was the worst living conditions I've ever lived in. So I would highly recommend anybody interested in going to a Vipassana tech, uh, retreat, go to somewhere that's in a more comfortable space, like a better um, kept first world country, something mm. like that. Nepal is like one of the poorest countries in the world. So we went to one that was in the birthplace of the Buddha. So we're like, oh, it's going to be charged up, good energy. Yeah. But then when we got to the center, we're like, oh, this is ghetto. <laughs> this is mm. rough. Yeah. Do you think that actually helped kind of remove the initial expectation in the beginning? Because because if you had like this amazing, you know, just altar to do a Vipassana and then you had all these expectations, you know, maybe it wouldn't have been as strong as now, you know, you had all these expectations. And the first thing that came up was psych, you know, you're in the ghetto. Yeah, I get. I totally understand that frame of thought, but no, 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 no. <laughs> bro, You're it just like, made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> this place sucked. Yeah. <laughs> it was so ghetto. Yeah, yeah it was just like, um, it and then you're like, you had ten days. In yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like the first day we got there. Like my room was so ghetto, and um, I think I put some photos on my Instagram yeah, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the post. In the post. So if you scroll, keep going down. You pull. Oh, how do you take pictures, go, man? Go, go you you smuggle some, your phone in there too? Yeah, it's okay. Go up. up. Uh, okay, wait, wait. Go down. And then <laughs> go down one more. And then the one on the left, I believe. This one? Uh, no, it's the one on the right, sorry. Yeah, she's that looking one. at you funny, bro. I think it's that one. And and if you scroll through, I think there's photos of the center. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's what it was looking like, right? It was, it was, it was rough. It's something in, like calm. That was my room. So that was my room. I slept, you, I slept you, there for 10 days. You lived in the hammock? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a mosquito net. Oh, I'm like, yeah. damn, dude. That's yeah. <laughs> Connected to the wall by a toothpick, <laughs> bro. <laughs> would fall. That's my. That was my bathroom. Serious, dude. Oh. Yeah, yeah. For ten like days, jail. it was worse than jail. Worse than a Canadian jail. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Trust me, I know. Um, and so that was like one of the, like the path from the uh, dinner hall to the yeah. meditation place. Yeah, it was ten days. Hold on, let me let me see let me see that. Okay, you got monkeys. Monkeys were the best part. Okay, let me let me see those. Let me see that bed, dude. What? <laughs> Did, did, is that like a bed that like if you moved cockroaches would just I, I only saw one on. cockroach the whole time but um I, the bed was on a concrete slab and it was a little f piece of foam like it was a what? Like it was really it was really hard and um so it was it wasn't comfortable it was not a comfortable space to be in mm. and um it, you know what I really learned from that was you get over it pretty quickly. Yeah. Like the first day I was like oh this place fucking sucks. <laughs> and then by day Two, I was just like, uh, well, mm. you know, you, you get used to it. So yeah. it's not that big of a deal. Like it's, it's uncomfortable, but I mean, us humans can get used to anything. Mm. Like we really can. And then we can then get to work. But yeah. like, it just takes a little bit of that adjustment period. That sucks where your expectations do have to drop. But then once you kind of, that was one of my biggest takeaways was like on day two, I just like, I was in my room and I was like, yeah, this place sucks. But then I was like, that's okay. Mm. It's, it's totally okay. I can do this. It's mm. fine. If this was the worst that, that could happen, I could completely handle this. Or if this was even worse, I like when you're in Vipassana, you have crazy um, world scenarios go on in your head, and you're like, well, what if like a nuclear disaster happened? And I was like, what? Yeah, because you're just by yourself <laughs> thinking in your head for so long. So you're like zombie <laughs> apocalypse, and you just like go into that frame of thought, and you're like, you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't have no idea. But then what if the world was like this or worse after? And I was like, I could live like this. Like, I could do it. I could, I could live in like war torn, mm. terrible circumstances, and I'd be like, you get used to it. You can mm. make it work. Um, so that's the plus of this. Mm. Um, but I would say the, the for anybody new going into a meditation retreat, I would recommend going to one that's a, in a bit of a more comfortable circumstance. So you're not battling your expectations and your comfort plus a new technique and living with yourself like mm. in your own head for 10 days. So New Zealand, Dave took me to the New Zealand one and it's like the best meditation center mm. I've ever been in. It was, it was cool. You know, it was like, 
grapefruit. Dude, I don't know. I feel like I feel like this one would have been well, maybe it's like different because you had a previous expectation, right? Yeah. Like you've had like a, like a higher standard. Yeah, yeah. it's like um, you're going from you know like like dating like a Russian woman in my case to like <laughs> everything else, you know? Like it, it's, okay, <laughs> but but what I'm saying is, I don't know. Like for for example, for me, like if I was there, I would probably and, and I didn't know what a vipassana was, and I was like, oh damn, this is gonna be ten days, and and you're like. Like, uh, there was this one guy that said when he was in jail was the first time that he ever felt free, mm. you know, because he literally had nothing. There was no comfort. And then, um, like, I think the biggest problem in our day and age is it's very easy for us to get comfortable. And when we're in that comfort zone, like that conversation with AJ is, AJ is like, dude, you need to put like stresses on your body, mm-hmm. not just your body, but your mind, your soul. And like, I, I think going in that dude. And then like learning how to be grateful in that when everything is like shitty instead of like this um, nice little Vipassana center with everything going. I just feel like that would even be more powerful, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, when when you take away a lot of um, options <laughs> yeah. and you're just kind of like stuck with bare bones, like like luxury can kind of confuse us sometimes. If yeah. we have too many choices and too much luxury and too many, too mon- too many things added to us, um, it complicates our life. But when we simplify our life, that's why a lot of those like super high power individuals live pretty simply. Mm. You know, it's not a bunch of added fluff. It's just like straight to the point. And so there's not a whole lot of these things. And I found it actually was easier to focus when I don't have all of these mm. other things in my life. And it's just, just do this. Mm. And it wasn't so bad. And, and, and I was happier. I was more content mm. uh, than adding all that stuff. And the stressors, like AJ said, are super important. That's how we're going to grow, right? Yeah. So if we have it too easy, we're eventually going to somehow be unhappy. It's funny, but it's like we need a little bit of shaking us up in order for us to grow. Mm. And, and, and if it's just a little bit too easy... It's not actually good for us. Mm. It's not a good thing. Yeah, dude. Walk me, walk me through like the the first couple of days. What was going on, and kind of like your the evolution of your thinking as well. Because because <laughs> yeah. day one you come in, you're like, damn, this yeah. is the ghetto. You lay down, and you're like, damn, this is uncomfortable. You're like, damn, yeah, this toilet sucks. You know what? What was? Yeah, day one you're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> day, day two you're like, and, and you're also exhausted. You're super yeah. sleepy because you're getting up at four thirty in the morning. And you're meditating mm. all day. And so by the end of it, I was pass- you're passing out. And you're like, there's no coffee. There's no kratom. There's no matcha. There's nothing. You're just... You're mm. just- there's no nicotine gum. No. You want some of that, by the way? AJ left that there. Fuck yeah. Thank- thanks, AJ. <laughs> thanks, AJ. <laughs> I actually... You want to go have these? <laughs> it's a little too... Oh, you're going to... I'll do one. You want, you want one? No. I'll take, I'll take the other half. No, it's okay, bro. This okay. is the nicotine gum. Sponsor- it. Gum. <laughs> Whoa. Mm. Damn. Um, I'm going to start tweaking out. I love these. No, really? I, actually, it's funny that AJ left this because AJ got me on these. Yeah. And I, like, love them now. Can you get addicted to these? Nicotine gum? Oh, probably. Because so I had I had exactly about that much, like a full strip of them in the Vipassana. So, <laughs> so okay, this is to, to go on that last yeah, How much stuff did you snuggle, like, smuggle into so, this Vipassana, dude? You got, so, like, your yeah. own little... Day one, you're like, fuck. Day two, you're like, what's in my bag that I can play with? And you just start <laughs> looking through your shit. And you're like... Okay, I have this thing. You're like, this is I found a, a full nicotine back of gum. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I have a thing. <laughs> like, ooh. And it's like something that you could like, like mm. it's like drugs. Like it's like your one thing, right? Mm. So I started experimenting with it. And it was like, I'd have like a nicotine gum. This is totally against the rules, by the way. Like you should, <laughs> you should not be doing this. Like you should, Dave would be pissed at me. I told him after. And, um, and so it was like, I started taking the nicotine gum in the morning meditations because I was super sleepy mm. or the afternoon after lunch ones, like around two o'clock, I'd be sleepy again. And I'd just be like sitting there and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so focused <laughs> and I had really good meditations on nicotine gum, yeah. not advised against the rules. You guys mm. shouldn't be doing this, but it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Mm. It was, it was so much more fun <laughs> like, mm. cause you're so sensitive, like, right. So you don't have like anything really else mm. and there's no external stimuli taking your attention and energy away. You're not scrolling through Instagram, looking at Russian babes mm. like you do a lot, you know? So, yeah. gonna- <laughs> <laughs> so this actually really helps. Um, so day two, you're kind of getting used to it. And you get used to your conditions a little bit more. You've accepted your reality. And once mm. you can accept things for what they are, you have choices and power now. So that's a huge thing that transfers in all of life. Once you accept what's happening, you can act. So, okay, now day two, I've, I've accepted it. Uh, I can start trying to drop into practice. Day three, things start coming up. Mm. And you start realizing you're like, 
I'm kind of an asshole. And it just comes, starts coming up. It's, you, see, you see your own shit. Mm. You're like, oh, wow. All the things that um, I thought I was being a good guy in, you're starting to see the deeper root cause of them. You're starting to see your ego come up. You're starting to see why you do things. You're starting to see that you're not always the good guy. Mm. And so for me personally, that's what comes up. So I went through a dark, deep, dark anger and sadness on day three, four. And yeah, about three, four, I was like, I was angry. I was just angry. Sitting there meditating, I was just angry. I was angry at Dave. He was like way at the front. I was angry. I was angry at everybody close to me in my life. What? And it was really strange. Yeah, really strange. For no reason or for a reason? It was maybe like I was, what was coming up for me was like times they were harsh to me or times they didn't mm. agree with me. What it really was, it was times that they weren't supporting the idea I have of myself. My ego was being um, threatened. And all the closest people to me tell me how it is. Like, they, they, they don't just, like, uh, brush my ego. They usually, um, thank God, they're so, that's why they're so close to me, is they'll, mm. they'll tell me if I'm out of, out of alignment or anything like that. So I started, like, oh, like, my ego was being attacked, and that was coming up. So I was fucking pissed, like, day three or four. And I wrote about it, too. I was, I just couldn't, I was coursing with anger. And it was a lot of anger that I hadn't quite expressed or processed. Mm. So I could feel it right in my throat. And so I haven't been communicating the anger and I'll sit in there just oh, like angry. And then it burned through on day five. And I just saw that <sighs> relieved a lot of pressure. And once I got past the anger, it was clarity and I was able to be happy again. And I started feeling joy. I started feeling deeper states of meditation. And so that, that was beautiful. Unfortunately, I had a cough like six out of the 10 days. I was sick from like, I guess the room was a little moldy. And so it was hard to drop in deeper layers of meditation because I was sick like more than half the time at the meditation center. And that really sucked. I was, I was mm. pretty pissed about it. But usually day six, seven, eight, it's, they get better and better and better. And then by day nine, you're like floating. And it's like, it's a powerful experience to go there and just connect to yourself. Mm.